So I'm sure a lot of you know ugh, the Chronicles of Narnia series. Um, I finished reading them this year with my son, and uh, I've read them a number of times, and then he liked them so much he read them on his own uh, as soon as we were done. Of course, every time you read them, you see different things, and this time, what really stood out to me, and I found really touching, is the description of the Pavensi, I think is their name, the Pavensi children, and the other children in the books, how Lewis describes them as kings and queens when they enter Narnia. And I think what Lewis is doing there, I, kn I know what Lewis is doing there, is he's using the fantasy world to sort of spotlight something in our world. And what he's picked up on is this idea that we were put here on the earth to, to rule, to be in charge, to be responsible. And with the whole idea of the regalia that the children get and the sort of the honor that they get from the animals in Narnia and their respect, it just sort of highlights and spotlights that aspect of, of, uh, of, our, of our world. And the interesting thing is the contrast. Of course, these are just regular kids and, and we're just, most of us, just regular people. And yet, if you, if you look at it from God's perspective, Welcome to the Sanctus Forum. I am Michael Stewart Robb, better known as Mike, and we're doing the conspiracy commentaries here, and that's because we're talking about The Divine Conspiracy by Dallas Willard, which is a fantastic book, and we're just doing it step by step, section by section, um, almost a snail's pace, and that's good because it's a book that requires a uh, slow, careful reading. Um, do try to read it with a pen or a highlighter or somehow to take some notes um, to see things that maybe you only see if you look a little closer. Today we are starting a new section. I'll put these down. Um, we've been talking about Jesus, how he enters the world, and about his message of the kingdom of God, how it's available to everyone. And this new section here, uh, with the title Made to Rule is going to switch a little bit and start talking about us. Dallas is going to use some of his philosophical muscle, um, but still staying with sort of biblical themes to talk about human beings, obviously, um, being made to rule. And this first section, the one for today, is what a kingdom is. Um, a kind of an important section, if you ever listen to Dallas Willard's audio, you'll hear him talk about these sorts of things from this, these really two pages here all the time. Because it has to do with what it means to be a person. And what it means to be a person is that you have a kingdom. You have a space where what you decide actually counts and happens. And the first level of that for us human beings is in our body. And so we have um, direct control over our body. And even more specifically, um, or narrowly, we have direct control over our thoughts, what we think about and what we don't think about. Now I'm getting a little too deep here too fast, but I just wanna hit on this point of what a kingdom is. And Dallas has this line in here. Um, a kingdom is a realm that is uniquely our own, where our choice determines what happens. Now. We're gonna go on and talk about God's kingdom, or that is Dallas will here, uh, if you look ahead, page 25. But this is an opportunity where Dallas is gonna kind of use the John Calvin rule or wisdom. And John Calvin, in the beginning of his biggest book, um, the, the Institutes, says there's no knowledge of God without knowledge of self and there's no knowledge of self without knowledge of God. Now this is an example of where Dallas is going to use the no knowledge of God without knowledge of self. And so he's going to dig in and try to 
say what, what self is, and then later we're going to look at what God is. And it's an interesting thing here with kingdom. The, the Bible doesn't use that word, that specific word, a whole lot with human beings. Um, it uses it a lot with God. But kingdom is a kind of human reality. So if you want to know what God's kingdom is, you kind of have to know what kingdoms are. And if you want to know what kingdoms are, it's best, perhaps in our day, not to just look at, you know, kings and queens with the robes and the scepters and the armies marching out, but to think more psychologically. Think about what it means to have charge over something, such as charge over your room or your apartment or your house or your property, and to be able to say, okay, I want this to go here, I want this to be shorter, I want this to be longer. And so if you look here, third paragraph, Dallas Willard is going to connect his teaching about kingdom into this idea of being in the image of God. There's a lot that can be said about that. And what's talked about in Genesis 1.26. And then also he's going to say it has to do with our destiny. Um, the destiny for which we are formed. And then you get this classic line. If you ever listen to Dallas Willard audio, you'll hear him say it. We are never ceasing spiritual beings with a unique calling to count for good in God's great universe. So that's looking forward to where we're going, not just the beginning image of God, but also looking forward to where our life uh, is taking us, where God is taking us in our life. Now, you don't have to call this kingdom, and this is something that gets a lot of people maybe a little messed up, especially if they're kind of Bible reading sorts of people, and they think, well, the Bible doesn't use this word kingdom of everybody, but it uses the concept, is what Dallas is going to say to that. And that's a philosophical discussion in and of itself. Um, if you're interested in that, we can talk about that in the comments, but uh, you don't have to call it kingdom. You can come up with something else. You can talk about responsibility. You can talk about dominion. You can talk about just the space where, uh, yeah, God puts you, your, your post. So let's see what else I want to say about this here. I, I write everything down because I will forget it otherwise. Ah, uh, yes. Um, this is very important for Dallas's understanding of persons and what it means to be a person. Uh, do really note this, even here for me, last word on page 21, only so can they be persons. And then on the next page, he's going to try to make that point even clearer. And he's going to talk about not having a kingdom would basically mean you're not a person. I mean, it's I say impossible for us to think about what a person would be that didn't actually have a space where what they wanted actually made a difference, counted. And of course, attacks on personhood um, come down to trying to take away pieces of their kingdom and give them control over nothing at all. So slavery is kind of an obvious way of doing that. Um, but uh, there are, my goodness, the 20th century has come up with even worse ways. Uh, so do notice that if you're a philosophy kind of person, um, think about this philosophy of personalism. Dallas Willard uh, studied that a lot, and there's a, been a lot of influence of that uh, form of philosophy on him, um, basically because he thinks it's it's biblical. Well, um, thanks for showing up. Uh, that's all I've got on this section. Let me know what you think of his understanding of kingdom. Um, and does it jar, especially if you're kind of a Bible studying kind of person, does it jar your understanding of kingdoms um, in the Bible? Um, or perhaps if you're a philosoph philosophical kind of person, whether it kind of highlights things or challenges other things um, there for you. Yeah, if you like this video, uh, let that liking be expressed with your finger, pushing a like button and uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And, and then we have a website which needs a, an update, sanctus.institute, and there's a monthly newsletter on there. I've just sent one out, so um, they do come, kind of. Uh, so we'll see you next time.